Well, here's an article I saw recently in the New York Times that really ticked me off. <laughs> I mean, I've been studying government programs for 30 years or more, you know, and my biggest fight has always been there because, oh, let's go, there's no grants for business because they call up the Small Business Administration and they don't have it, you know. And everybody really beat on me badly for many years. You know, I've become immune to it now. But now I see it's in the mainstream. The New York Times writes an article about <laughs> all the grants that are available for business. Yeah. And, and, you know, they got some of it wrong, but, you know, it's good. So now it's mainstream, so now I don't have to do this fight anymore, and I could go on to other things, which is so nice. But, but take a look at this, because it's important. It, it's, the article is about a woman in New York City who has a, a, she's in the fashion business. She makes embroidery or something like that. And she has a embroidery studio. You know, and she got a big contract and, and she needed to train her employees and get new equipment and all that. Well, she found a grant. She had no idea it was there, right in the city of New York. See, a lot of this stuff is not at the federal level. It's at the state level, the local level, the city, uh, municipalities. And she got a $67,000 grant. Didn't have to pay it back, right? And it's from the fashion Fashion Manufacturing Initiative. It's a public-private thing, so it's not even a full government thing. It's a private nonprofit with some government money and and all that. That's why it's a complicated system out there. Yeah, and, and she never applied for a grant before in her life. She got the money, and it, 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 it changed her life. Yeah, uh, but here, more importantly, what the article says, and they go through like a typical article. They find experts and quote them, and of course, they didn't call me. They think I'm an idiot, <laughs> even though I wrote a column for the New York Times. But that's another thing. Okay, so in the article it says things like, okay, programs at the federal, state, and municipal levels are available to help small businesses pay for new equipment, train employees, upgrade the facilities, and expand into new markets. You know? And then here, here's the only big mistake they did. Now it says the good starting point is to go to grants.gov. Not nah. You know, grants.gov is really for nonprofit organizations, researchers, and things like that. The, article, the, the programs they talk about in, in the article will not be in grants.gov. You know, it, it's the main money that the, government, the, grant, the federal government gives out to local, and then they split it up into all different things, and you, you'll never know. So uh, if for business, you don't want to start at grants.gov. Okay, uh, but then the article goes on to say, nearly every state offers financial assistance to businesses. Idaho itself, Idaho, little state like Idaho, five different programs. Then they also say like cities, counties, and other municipal government organizations also offer financial assistance. Yeah, and, and then they talk to people running these programs. You know, the, the local officials and the county government and stuff like that. And they say that grant programs are a great strategic tool for spurring economic development. See, that's why they use it. That's why they want to give you a grant to start a business, you know, and, and you're going to grow the community. And so then everybody's happy. See, businesses that benefit from these grants repay the city's investment many times over in relating jobs, paying taxes, uh, and continuing to perform as cornerstones of the community. See, they're doing this for selfish reasons. You know, you're giving them a favor. You know, you're a decent business. Well, then that, they want to invest some decent businesses to grow. They give you a grant. And, uh, and they even mentioned a program I've known for 30 years down in Florida, Dade County. Uh, has a, something called a mom and pop small business grant. It's called mom and pop. <laughs> and that's been there for 20, 30 years. Yeah. Uh, also, there's prize money. Like New York City has prize money. Where there's this plumbing company called PAC, P-A-C, Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning, out in Staten Island, got $50,000 so they could get iPads for all their plumbers and technicians that run around <laughs> fixing the houses and stuff like that. So that's, you know, the stuff is real. It Grants are really good. The problem is finding the right places. And there's a couple ways to start to find. Don't go to grants.gov. Go to the, this website, the uh, ASBDC. That's the Association of Small Business Development Centers. ASBDC-US.org. Okay, so ASBDC us.org and there'll be a, a source there you put in your zip code and you find the local economic development center they're the offices that the local governments are supporting to find you and your businesses when they want money so they'll help you and then here's a, a link if you go to uh, um, you know YouTube slash 
Matthew Lesko 70 and you put in, you don't have to be stupid when you start grow your business. You know, and, and we have a, a video there that interviews these people you know, at a development center, and you'll see all the stuff they help you. I mean, they help you market, they help you get government contracts, and it's all free. Now this is going to charge you anything. So, and if the link works on YouTube now or, or down in the uh, comment section below, uh, I'll put the lo link to the YouTube video there too. So, you know, they're lying when they, they tell you there's no grants for business. <laughs> Listen, do you realize that over 6 million people are getting up to $1,800, that's right, from the government in one year to help them pay actually for their utility bills like your heating and air conditioning bills or even to fix up your heater or your air conditioner or whatever it is. Yeah, it's called the LEAP program, Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. So that's L-I-H-E-A-P Dot org. You can go to that website and you'll see, see, this is a federal program, but the money goes to the states. So in that website at liheap.org, they have a listing of states there and where to contact your states to apply. Now it's low income, so that means that there's an income requirement. Now what they call low income is really families making up to like $41,000 a year. So, I mean, this tiny economy, 41,000 <laughs> bucks, yeah. It, it is you know almost middle class in a lot of neighborhoods so don't dismiss these kinds of programs that are out there now uh, so that's the way to apply you know and, and you have to go to the offices themselves don't let somebody call you on the phone and charge you some money to get an you know an application to fill it out or something no you go right there liheap dot org you know and apply if you get screwed up you can call 211 that's right 211 it's a local hotline ask them about the energy assistance programs you know uh, that are available in your state and they could connect you see there's all different ways and there's dozens of programs like this and actually our members you know uh, to our service can go to online and they could go to lesco.com slash pay bills p-a-y-b-i-l-l-s dot p-h-p and there's a, a map there and you could get you know like a dozen programs in your state that are like this you know that may be income related may not be income related but they're the programs that you really should know they're there just in case you may be eligible for it it, it costs nothing to find out you know and, and if you're not a member you know actually on fiverr we have a program on fiverr that's f-i-v-e-r-r -R, if you haven't heard about that dot com and, and just search for matthew lesko there and for five bucks we'll send you a custom report uh, on the program programs in your area. But whether you use our stuff or not, the programs are there talking about, everybody's talking about, you know, the government's disappearing and everything. That's nonsense. You know, they're giving out more money in these programs than ever before. It's just how much and where and things like that. So you got to be aware of them. And again, uh, when in doubt, you could call your local 211, asking about local programs in your area. Okay. Six million people, $1,800 a piece. It's a lot of money. Well, I'm going to give you five more reasons why you shouldn't go to a for-profit college, particularly the, the two-year colleges. And actually what came out is some data from the White House and the Department of Education because they're trying to regulate them more. You know, because, see, actually, here, here's what the data show, okay? Uh, at a for-profit uh, university, they have, you know, the colleges for-profit, two years and stuff, 13% uh, of the people in college are going to these places. But... 50% of the student loan defaults are from these places. So the people going to these colleges are defaulting. I represent 50% of all the student debt defaults, means they can't pay their debt, but are only 13% of the students. So there's something going on there. Okay, here's another thing. The average two-year for-profit university, you know, has, when you graduate, you have a debt of 25 three thousand five hundred and ninety dollars okay so that means you're going to graduate after two years and owe like almost twenty four thousand dollars <laughs> from student debt if you went to community college majority of those people have zero 
zero debt after two years and, and getting an associate's degree. So why pay $24,000 you have to pay out of your pocket versus zero? So that's crazy. Okay, now here's another thing too. 72% of the graduates from a two-year for-profit university, when they graduate, they are earning less than a high school dropout. So you just went to two years of college and now you're earning less money than a high school dropout. So is that really getting you a better job? 72%. <laughs> so it's crazy. Yeah? And actually what's interesting too is that, see, 90% of the money that the colleges, these two-year colleges get, is from the government. It's you getting a government loan to give them and then you graduate in two years with a, a, a debt you have to pay back and a lousy job. Now that's crazy. You know? <laughs> so when you go to community college with zero debt. Okay. Now here's another thing. The new rules coming out, and this is the reason why you, know, <laughs> you should evaluate these people a little better. The new rules coming out are, are going to say that when somebody graduates, they, their loan can't be more than 20% of their uh, discretionary earnings or 8% of their total earnings and 30% of the students can't be in default. So if they're over 30% in default, they're not gonna get government you know, guaranteed money anymore. And what they say is there's 20% of the programs are already like that. So there's already 20% of these four college universities that have an over 30% default rate, you know, or, or are charging people more money than they can get, you know, when they graduate, and they won't be able to stay in the pro program under these new rules. Now that's why these rules are just out to be talked about now <laughs> before they go into effect. And they tried to bring them out last year, but the the for-profit university lobbyists beat them down on it. You know, <laughs> they, they found their congressman friends, you know. Uh, to push back on this. So it's amazing. And actually right now they say there's a million people in these schools who are going to be screwed when they graduate. You know, and so there's already a million people. So be careful on these things. I mean, you know, these for-profit universities, I mean, they're, they're living off government money, you know, that they're making you borrow to give them money and you get nothing in return. <laughs> I've been in business for a long time and you know, as an entrepreneur I had a bunch of businesses and whatever and I've seen things come and go you know and now with crowdfunding you know I see what happens and anything that's new and very exciting and people are making a lot of money man it attracts sharks yeah <laughs> the people who smell blood in the water man they're gonna go after something you know and that happens in our society particularly in capitalism because people think hey there's an easy money and what they play on easy money is when people don't know the facts when people don't really know what they're doing when when, when the whole industry is so so new nobody knows what they're doing so what happens the sharks come in and they tell you hey we know how to make a lot of money at this because they know you don't know and really nobody knows but they play on the fact that you don't know and they're able to use their personality or clever words or whatever to get you to trust them and say hey just give me a lot of money and I'll help you make all this money that's out there you know? <laughs> which is crazy and the way they're doing that in crowdfunding now is because the, see the platforms are free for you to go out there and put your idea or project on a crowdfunding platform that doesn't cost you anything you know and then when you get money you pay a percent a small percent to the people with the platform but marketing getting your name out there getting your idea out there you know that's what takes effort and nobody knows exactly how to do that we all guess and there's ways and there's some simple rules to try but nobody's certain so people are out there say hey i know how to do that you just give me a couple thousand bucks and I'll make sure, you know, you'll get that million dollars you want and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it, it, they prey on people who don't have knowledge and, and none of us do. So it's easy to get preyed on. <laughs> You're not the only one. So 
in that, particularly advertising and social media and publications and getting your idea out there so people, blogs will write about it and other people, you don't want to go out and spending a lot of money before you know exactly what you're doing. And here this next interview is a guy who has a, a service really that's very, very reasonable. I mean, 20, 30 bucks you could start to learn this system instead of giving somebody thousands of dollars. He's a sweet guy. He's been in this for a long time and he covers the crowdfunding industry and, and, and his stuff now is crowdfunding PR. So how to get people to write it up. I mean, I, I believe in PR because if you could get somebody to write you up for free, why pay an ad? You know, but you can't spend thousands of dollars in trying to get somebody to write up because you might as well do it with the ad. You know? So that's the important thing. And also, the more you learn yourself about how to do it, the stronger of a business or an opportunity that you will make. Instead of hiring guns and you know, very expensive to learn to, to, to do this for you, it may or may not be successful. There's no guarantees in anything. So the more you actually dig those ditches yourself and see who's interested in your product, because see you contacting them the cells, uh, uh, these people yourself, it, it, it's a better sell because you're talking from your heart. The others are hired guns. They don't really know. And then you'll learn more about how to say something or how to do something because you're getting instant feedback in your ear, not in somebody else's ear. So unless you have lots and lots of money and very little time, okay, throw your money and see what happens. But if not, start small, like with something like this and learn it yourself. That's how to get strong. You know, is you learn it with yourself because we all, the magic is different for all of us. And we have to create our own magic by lending our own personality, our own interests, and what we're all about to the project. That's what makes it special. The more you put in of yourself. So watch this. Well, Sam! Man, crowdfundingpr.org, and you're gonna be the savior for anybody who wants to think about actually doing a crowdfunding program because you're gonna show them how to do publicity for next to nothing. I mean, all these experts out there, you know, give me thousands of dollars and I'll help you get you know, your crowdfunding site, you know, get millions from, and they can't guarantee any of that. But you got a reasonable product you know, for next to nothing that people can get, you know, seen by media, people that will write you up and maybe thousands of people will see you instead of just your buddy down the street that you sent a tweet to. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. And I'm really excited to share some of these exclusive tips with people. Um, happy to provide advice and I just look forward to helping people launch their campaigns and you know be successful. But I mean, we, we talked about a year ago too, and, and so people could see the other interview from, uh, you know, it's Crowd Crux, and 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 that side's really just to help people. So your heart is really trying to help people have successful campaigns, and I think you're, you know, one of the few in the industry really sincere about. You know, that's all you're into. You're not trying to scam people out a lot of money and, you know, uh, dreams and say, hey, you can make a million dollars if you hire me or, or something like that. Here for 25 bucks, you'll give them basic stuff just to make sure they're not missing the obvious. Because if you've done this the first time, man, you don't even know what the obvious is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. The end goal is to help people have successful campaigns. Yeah. I think one of the best ways I can add value is on the PR front. Just because that's not on most people's radar. Right. Um, at least when I started, was was. Well, and I believe in publicity, man. I made millions and millions and millions of dollars because I found out when I was doing books before, <laughs> when books were still sold on talk shows. I mean, I go around doing free publicity and you know, it's free advertising. Exactly. I didn't have to pay for it. Then when I start buying advertisement, you know, and I said, "Why? Well, I could get on Letterman, you know, and sit there for free for ten minutes." because I act crazy, you know, or buy an ad for $50,000 for one minute. Yeah. It's so a no brainer, you know. Exactly. So why not use the media to get it for free instead of buying an ad? And that's, that's what you're about. It's a little bit of a different um, technique because when you're dealing with the media, you also need to create a story that's interesting yeah. for them. 
Yeah. And that's really what PR is all about. Yeah. That's sort of the trick behind it. Right. No, the average person who has a TV show or a blog or something doesn't want to say, hey, buy this thing or die, you know, the way a salesman would say it. You have to say, well, you know, we have a problem in our country with something and this may solve it. You, know, you have to find a story behind it to get them into it because they want to help people too. And that's yeah, their exactly. mission. Yeah. And, and you organized all this, so you have all the lists and who to contact and how to get it out. So, I mean, somebody doing this first time, it's like a no-brainer to give you 25 bucks and, and start and what, the process. One of the really hard things, too, is when you're launching, say, a Kickstarter, an Indiegogo, it's hard to develop rapport with a potential new backer. And just being yeah. able to put these logos on your page saying, you know, we've been ah. syndicated on these sites. It just I instantly see. builds a little bit of credibility in their eyes. Uh, oh, you're yeah. right. You know, I mean, if I had, like, I used to write a column for the New York Times Syndicate, you know, so and be able to put that New York Times, you know, I'm in the New York Times every month was, was terrific. Yeah. So that's what you're doing, getting people in these syndicated places so then they could put on their website or their campaign as seen in, you know, uh, these major media sources. Yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's exactly right. And it's also great, too, if a journalist, you're pitching someone, say, at the New York Times, and they see the name of your company, they like the pitch, they put the name of the company into Google, they see all these sites ah, that have been featuring you and have right. been writing about you. Um, ah, that's a really right. big asset, too, right. just shows that you're interesting. Well, what is, I mean, I see a lot of people, I talk to people who run campaigns and, and, and they tell me they get called by publicity people, you know, PR people. Oh, you have a campaign, you need us. You know, we'll charge you $5,000 or whatever. And, and so what's your philosophy I mean, if, for a little guy primarily starting out? Should they get involved in one of these big PR firms or not? Well, so a PR agency, what mm -hmm. you're talking about, yeah. essentially their role would be to sell your story um, on your behalf. Right. to journalists, usually out of their own contact list. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be actively pitching and calling and emailing these journalists. And what you come to realize is it's really just sales. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you can do yourself. Um, it takes a little bit of learning how to tailor a story, how to reach out to journalists, effectively create a, you know, um, a news list. But it's something that little guys can do themselves. It's yeah. just a time investment. Yeah. Um, so really, I, I recommend that. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, um, it's a skill set, learning how to get your story in the media that'll just pay dividends years down the road. So that's Forever. really the ideal. Forever. <laughs> because if you learn that skill, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, and I believe, I mean, I start a lot of businesses and I find in our country, I, I spend 80, 90 percent of my creativity trying to get people to know about <laughs> what I'm doing, not actually doing the work. <laughs> but, but you really have to be skilled in our society on how to get people to know about the work. And, and to me, if you're going out to hire that from some hired gun, it's sort of like, you know, this is your heart and soul, and then you're hiring a soldier of fortune to fight for you when you should be fighting your own wars because that's more of a guarantee you win. If you do, you know, if you do want to go that route, there are yeah. a few ways to ensure that um, it's a bit of a better relationship. One is to try to find someone that is already involved in your industry, say that's ah. 3D printing or music. I they see. already that's a good point. Um, are enthusiastic about those types of clients. Uh -huh. The other is to structure the deal so that there's some money up front that they're going to you know, be entitled right. to, but also based on the percentage of um, your success, they'll also get bonuses. And uh -huh. if you meet your goal and beyond that, they'll get other bonuses. So uh -huh. you really want to try to pull people into your vision yeah. and incentivize them to work hard. Um, yeah. no, I mean, I, I used to run all my marketing that way on television. I I could buy an ad, but then they had ads that they were you know, like the public service announcement kind of stuff. Oh, you could use my ad and I'll give you half the money. So they say, <laughs> if they gave, if they made me money, then they make money. If they didn't make me money, yeah. Yeah, and that's, I think that at the end of the day, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, a good relationship is where you're making money from Absolutely. the campaign, they're making money from helping you, and the platform's making money. And right. Everyone's happy. Exactly. The backers get cool products, you know, right. so. That's important. Well, I think you're great to be there, Sal, because it's, you're an honest guy, and, and anything that's growing as fast as crowdfunding, it, uh, you know, it attracts sharks. <laughs> I, couldn't, yeah, I couldn't agree more, um, especially in the crowdfunding industry. Yeah. There's really a lack of knowledge, yeah. and a lot of these people are first-time entrepreneurs, and 
I've seen lots of people trying to scam them and yeah. contacting them on platforms and you know the the list is piling up of the companies that are have shady tactics in that area so now, it's it, so you got to be careful so when in doubt don't spend money <laughs> do it yourself <laughs> yeah, you and I would say good. I would say too a great way to um, if you do have questions is to ask a question on one yeah. of my forums you know mm -hmm. Kickstarter forum or crowdfunding forum you have a question about a company that contacted you just post a, I post see. a, that's a good um, point. Yeah. message there. People will give their own input, you know. And that's crowdcrux.com. Uh, crowdcrux is my blog. Uh, right. The two forums that I run mm -hmm. are crowdfundingforum.com and kickstarterforum.org. Ah, I see. Wonderful. And, and the publicity, and there's a lot of free help there. I mean, on I mean, you have like 11 places. Everybody should know about uh, doing publicity for your campaign. I mean, that's you know that's all your secrets you're, you're giving them away everything if they want to do it themselves right there right exactly I, you know I, my uh, strategies are an open book yeah um, right. and pretty much if you just dedicate it like a day to learning everything you could probably yeah. do it or yeah. at least have a, an idea of the fundamentals but yeah. essentially my sort of process is one you need a media list mm -hmm. um, so you need a list of people that are writing about the topic that you want to be you know, um, put in and usually that I've, I've been using a bunch of tools, but one I've discovered recently is called BuzzSumo, B-U-Z-Z-S-U-M-O. And it's a free tool, and uh -huh. you can input keywords. So for example, I used this example before, uh, 3D printing. Right. You can see all of the publications that are ah. writing about that topic. So ah. you can use that to generate a media list. And That's you can also terrific. filter those um, websites by page rank, by audience size, by wow. how many social shares. Oh, that's what, well, you just cut yourself out of business. <laughs> yeah, so that's a free tool um, yeah. I discovered recently. So yeah. the next step is you want to develop your pitch. Um, mm. So essentially, why should someone write about you? Right. What are the unique aspects of your story and your product? Mm -hmm. And you really need to think about the publication's audience when you're doing right. that what's going to interest them because mm -hmm. that's really what the journalists right. that's what their job they're, is they're trying to help the reader and and you provide that service too i mean for another 50 bucks or whatever you levels of services that that people could take advantage of yeah uh, exactly. from you right so that's crowdfundingpr.org so you got an org you're really a, a save the world guy aren't you <laughs> uh it doesn't say anything about the, the service that's I mean, dot orgs. I think way back in the internet days were more right. you know, for nonprofits and stuff. Exactly. It's transitioned right. a bit. Yeah, um, I think so. So yeah, after building the story, I think then starting the outreach and really mm -hmm. this is trial and error as yeah. well. You know, now, figuring out what works and what doesn't. Absolutely. Work going from there. The the uh, the crowd tells you if it's good or not. The the media will tell you if it's good or not, and you go back and reform. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I've also been. Um, one of the big problems I've noticed as well is people reaching out and just getting silence. You yes. know, not getting any kind of response. Yes. That's dreadful. And if you just spend an hour online, you can discover tools that if you send an email, you can track if someone else opens it. Ah, I see. Yeah. So, so there's everything. It really just comes down to getting smart about right. what you're doing and researching and learning these new skill well, sets. It, it, people have to learn that just as much as their product, as making their product. Because if people don't know about your product, you're not in business. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sal. Thanks for being there, and thank you for being a straight guy and uh, trying to help people and get rid of the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you know, I think a good place to start would be my blog, uh, crowdcrux.com. Crowdcrux.com. Uh, if then, you go to the about section, my email's out there for anyone to contact yeah. me if you want to reach out. And it's all free information, uh, a good place for people to start learning about the process. Thank you, Sal. Thank you again for everything, and thanks for being there. Take yeah, care. Yeah, definitely. Thanks so much for having well, just think of all the cool things we have that just a few years back, you know, it was considered like science fiction. You know, I mean, I'm an old guy, you know, so 20, 30 years ago, you know, I mean, that was, uh, I was current. I was a hip young guy, you know, and, and then I didn't think about 
wireless cell phones, right? But we got them now. <laughs> or e-books. No, I see my book books, but we have e-books now. Or cars that get 50 miles to the gallon. We got those now, right? Well, here's something else we have now that you won't believe is robots for like $35 that you could program whether you're a five-year-old or a 95-year-old. That's right, your own programmable robot that you could have. And here's a guy who's developed them. You know, and he actually, he wrote software so even a five-year-old could understand and be able to make these robots do things. You know, I mean, it's a toy, it's a learning experience. And what's interesting to me about it, it's a way to learn about robotics. This is going to lead, you know, be more and more useful in our lives. We're going to have robots doing a lot of other ugly things that we don't like doing. Whether it's, now we have the vacuum cleaner robots, right? So it's going to be more and more. So the more the average person can understand the basics of how these things operate so that you could take full advantage of the technology. And that's the important. See, I mean, all this technology is be able to use it to our advantage or to your advantage. You know, and if you don't understand the basics, you don't have to be, you know, uh, a gazillion dollar an hour programmer to you know be able to under just understand how to do it so you can ask somebody who really knows how to do it to do the things you want it to do not somebody else decide what to do it's sort of like hiring a lawyer I mean lawyers I mean could be a big problem but you have to know when to use them when not to use them so robotics everything is like that so you have to understand the little basics of things so you have to know when to use them it's like having a toolbox when to use a hammer when to use a pliers when do you use certain things well if you know you have to know that a hammer nails things and that's when you do it or a, a lawyer does this and that's when you want to do it so robotics it's the same thing it's a fun new way to learn and it's brand new about robotics so watch this well brenton o'brien man and you're gonna meet <laughs> you're not only gonna meet brenton you're gonna meet edison.com because that's where you have you know on your website you're raising money and crowdfunding now to make everybody in the world a geek everyone's gonna know how to <laughs> program a, a, a robot because we don't have to program if we have your little robot right we just hook it up the computer and move the pictures around and we can make that little robot do anything <laughs> and you're doing it for everybody so you say this is for a five-year-old to a 95 year old to yeah do that's that? right yeah. yeah so um uh, it's uh lego compatible um there he is oh the there he is there. yeah so yeah so it's got all lego connections on the top and on the bottom and on the side so you can build up all your lego onto him um so it's really easy you know a five-year-old can use lego no problems um and then you can program it it comes with pre-programmed features mm -hmm. so he actually will drive across a barcode and the barcode will tell him to do something like follow a line or even ah. respond so you, 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 you it comes with bar control. barcodes that you just put on on the floor or something and, and this will follow it along yeah you, ju you just print them out uh, I see. oh you print them out ah. from our website you print them out on your on your computer printer and you drive them across and yeah. uh, and he goes off and does whatever the barcode tells him so <laughs> you, you know you can you can quite you know for a five-year-old they can certainly read a barcode I and see. across a barcode and then and as you get you know older and more interested and uh, more capable with him you can actually program it yourself using uh, uh our icon based programming language Aye. which is free to download to open yeah. source software and like i said you know you're just dragging pictures across you form a, a, a series of pictures and he goes and does what those pictures say and so it, you can clap your hands and it'll do something. You talk to it. It reacts to lights. And it yeah, does all these it. things. Yeah, except make your eggs in the morning, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you could probably join a few of them together with your leg on. You might be able to do that too. That will be coming soon, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's just wonderful. And, and also, besides, you know, individually, and the most important thing about it is the price. I mean, you got this like 30, 40 bucks, you know, for people to that's do, right? right? I yeah, mean, yeah. now, I mean, I, I know my kid, I've got an engineer son who's like 30 or something he was really into robotics and he was in engineering school and you had to belong to the club and this thing cost thousands of dollars to use and everything yep. so now for yep. 40 bucks i got a robot i can program and don't even have to know how to program
That's right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You get right into it. And then so $39, and that's Australian as well, so it's even cheaper than that in <laughs> US uh, dollars. It's like $37. So, And then for, um, for teachers, they can get a, a, the entire class pack, pretty ah. robots. Every single student has a robot. I see. Less than $30 each robot, you know? And, wow. and uh, the market leading product at the moment is Lego. So, so, uh, uh, so the robot, so Edison is less than $30 uh, right. each when a class buys 30 of them. Oh, so I each see. student can have one each. So they can really interact, ah. work on their own personal project. You know, with the Lego, uh, the Lego robotics, they're $500. So it's Edison is $30 yeah. right. Right, for when you buy a class set. And then the Lego, um, uh, the actual Lego brand product, uh -huh. The Lego Mindstorm is five hundred dollars a kit. Oh, I see. So yeah, so that they're really expensive. So fifteen thousand dollars if a teacher wants I to have see. every student with one. I How see. many public schools have fifteen thousand ah, dollars to spend schools. on robotics? Yeah, all right. <laughs> you know, I it, see. It becomes, so your option it, it is fifteen hundred dollars versus thirty bucks for for kids. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that, that that's amazing. So really, it's an educational tool, but not only for a classroom setting, but a anywhere. I mean, it, it's a yeah, toy. Yeah. It's a toy that teaches. I mean, th this would be j just delightful. I'm sure the education community is going to be all over you, all over this. Yep. Everybody will want one in schools, whether it's Australia here or or, or even China. They're going to be after this. Uh, yeah, and, and, and it's just wonder. So why? I mean, are you a kid at heart? Is is this where it came from, or where did this come from in your head? <laughs> yeah, well, I like to think myself as a bit of a kid at heart. Absolutely, that's fantastic. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, I always loved Lego. You know, when I was a kid, I used uh, to have mountains of the stuff. Um, you know, I couldn't get enough. There was no <laughs> such thing as too much Lego, and. Uh, and that grew into uh, an obsession with electronics as a I kid see. as well. Become an electronics engineer. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I started selling some robot kits about 10 years ago. Oh, I see. Um, wow. Had some success with that. Yeah. So, I see. And, uh, and then sort of things went a bit quiet over the, the um, sort of global financial crisis period. I see, right. So I went out, I got a full time job during that period and, and uh, worked in marketing for four years. Ah. And picked up a bit about marketing, and um, unfortunately, I was made well. Probably, fortunately, I was made redundant about twelve months ago. Ah, so I went, fortunately, oh, yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> then I had time to actually work on this well, guy. Yeah. Well, that's you know? wonderful. Well, I'm glad we got you back and away from that company, <laughs> whoever you were working that's right, with. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but, but at least you I'm picked much up happier the, working for myself. You, you picked up marketing skills with the orange suit, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you learn that, and, and the toy looks elegant design for a toy. It, it's just beautiful design, and, 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 and it's going to be available for Christmas, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what we're yeah, So we're, now we're, on we're, Kickstarter, we're, we're, and while you still have a, a few days left on Kickstarter to get one, for every kid yeah. you know, or grown up, or anybody who even knows how to spell robot should have one of these things. That's right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, you've got and a, you know, you great way to learn more about technology. Absolutely, because it's going to be all over in our life, and you, you might as well have something that you could relate to to understand how this works. And it's Meet Edison, M E E T E D I S O N dot com. Go in there now because it's only 30 bucks. Yep. <laughs> you got to get a robot. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brenton, and, and it's so nice to have you back, you know, in the entrepreneurial yep. scene giving us great products. Talk yep, to you no soon. Worries. Thank you. Take care. All right. Thank you very much. I don't know about you, but I use text messaging now probably more than even talking on the phone. You know, and if I have kids, you know, they're about 30 plus or minus years, you know, and they use text. And, and it's really less disruptive when you talk to somebody, text, you know, and you don't have to hear the, uh, the ringing of the phone, you don't have to talk to somebody, interrupt. So it's texting. Now, here's a device that you could text all you want for free. Plus, you could do it anywhere. Even when there's no cell phone connection, no nothing. You, know, you could be out in like Burning Man in the middle of the woods. I went to that one uh, uh, one year, a couple years ago. Yeah, And it's in the end of August, which is now when I'm taping this. And so it reminded me of that because there's no cell phone service. But if you have this device with your cell phone, you could text to anybody with this device also.
so it, it comes in pairs and be great for groups or whatever but again no monthly fees you know it's amazing see everything is changing I mean this is what's interesting about our world that people are getting so clever there's ways around anything you don't have to rely see the big guys you know, get the big monopolies the Comcast and the Verizon and everything and they charge like hell because they have to grow these big organizations that are so inefficient and uh, to pay for all that inefficiency they got to charge you and I outrageous fees and contracts forever and all this nonsense well here are, are people in the cracks who are able to see opportunities able to grab the you know find out about that opportunities and, and this is sort of like a, a CB radio but on your cell phone you know, remember when CB radio, you talk to each other and you don't have to go through Mom Bell or the telephone company or anything? Well, this is like it. The same thing. But it's for texting. You know, and it's for people who have cell phones. But you don't need a cell phone carrier. You know? <laughs> and you buy this little strip and anywhere you know, and you use it. You can be out in the middle of the woods, out in the middle of the desert, at a concert, you know, uh, underneath the ground, anywhere. And, and, and this will work. It's a wonderful idea. And, and that's why it shows you the possibilities. Everybody says, well, everything's invented. Everybody says, oh, the country's not doing anything. And, oh, jobs are hard to get. God, the creativity that is possible now because of the Internet and the access to technology all over the world. You have access to, the, to people that help you for free on almost any subject. I used to think only the government could help you for free because they had to. You paid their salary. But now, no, the world is so much wider and bigger than that. And that help is out there for all of us to take advantage of, grab it, and start running with it, you know, and create new things and create new opportunities and make your own life grow and the people around you. So watch this. Watch how they did it. Well, Daniela Ponomo, but more importantly, who cares about your name? It's GoTenna.com that people should know about. I mean, this is the first thing I think. Now you've created, you know, a device that allow me to use my cell phone. I don't have to worry about NASA <laughs> getting into this or, or anybody hacking into all my messages or anything. It's great. Plus, I just found out before we went on there. I could use this at Burning Man, out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> and where I get no reception and a lot of sand all over, and, and this solves the problem. And so you really have a cell phone connection for text messaging without any you know big company involved. It's your own little network you do, right? It's true, yeah. So we've developed this little device that pairs with your smartphone and allows you to text and share your location with anyone else who also has it without ever having to rely on any central connectivity. So you're not plugging in to cell towers, to Wi-Fi routers, or to satellites. You're creating your own signal, and you can send it completely privately for free to anyone else who has Gotenna. So it's like, I mean, you know, old technology like this was like a walkie-talkie or something like that, right? Is that the kind of stuff it was? I mean, we are marrying of radio technology, which walkie talkies uh -huh. work off of, with the digital smartphone. And I think, uh -huh. in the process, making both much better. So, unlike uh -huh. a walkie talkie, you don't have to be on the same channel as someone. You don't uh -huh. have to speak to everyone within range of you. You can direct your mm -hmm. messages to specific people or specific groups. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also broadcast to others within range in case of an emergency. Um, and and the, the point is that you're really using the phone you already have on you, yes. uh, the way you already use it. And now you simply have the ability to communicate when it w where it wasn't possible before. Right. I mean, so I could see you know in work environments or you know I I, I have a company with you know, people running around all over. I mean to get a hold of people that way without having to worry about connection, and then the person can't say, "Well, I didn't have a good cell connection to talk to you" or something like that. <laughs> they can't they can't do that. Absolutely. So you can now communicate where you couldn't before. Um, no. There is a range limitation, uh, so you can't speak from, say, you're in D.C. and I'm in New York, right. you can't speak over Gotenna, but you can speak to people who are up to 50 miles away from you in ideal conditions, and in most situations, right. you know, 
anywhere from a mile to six miles away from you. But I mean, it's great. I mean, you're 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 on the beach with you know, your kid has a cell phone, right? And you go on holiday on the beach and everything. So now you know you can really get a hold of that kid where he is. You know, you know, uh, a couple yards down the beach, and you can't see him and all the people that you can grab his butt when you need to, right? <laughs> in fact, it doesn't even have to be a phone. So if you have really young children and they uh -huh. don't have phones yet, but they have an iPod, uh, it will ah. still work on that. So it'll work on any iOS or Android device. I see. Well, the neatest thing too. Now, now you on your website what you can do is you're about to go to production now so people can order this now for like half price I mean you, you, you can get this thing and you get two you don't only get one you can give it to your wife or your girlfriend or if you have both you'd have to buy <laughs> another set right yeah, so we're selling them right now uh, two for $149.99 uh -huh. off a little cost later and there's no fees or charges after that and yeah. you just buy it on gotenna.com and you'll you'll have them in time for you know Christmas and Hanukkah Wonderful. So that's a, I mean, what a hell of a Christmas present, you know, and, and then plus, I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, all these big companies, man, they're, you know, they're selling razor blades. You know, they, they give away the device and they get you for $50 a month for the rest of your life, you know, which is stupid, you know, so here it's a one-time fee. And I think we're, we're going to that. Cu customers are really getting wise to, <laughs> to these big companies getting 50 bucks a month of you forever. So this is what you're doing. You're ahead of the curve doing this. So you have a communication device, you know, that you don't have to pay a monthly fee for you know and yeah. plus there's a way you figured out to get it to people for free right if i recommend people <laughs> yeah no absolutely if you in if you re refer people to buy go 10 after you bought yours uh you could you get ten dollars back for each person who buys Gotenna, and so, you know, with 15 people buying it, you could get yours for free. Right. <laughs> so, so not only all the free monthly charge, I could get a free, <laughs> you know, the technology for free too. The whole bloody thing for free, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we really think this is about building a communication network yeah. for the people, by the people, so it's really powered by you and how you want to use it, not just who you talk to, who can talk to you, but, you know, also literally where and when you use it and how often. Yeah. So, I mean, anybody who has one of these devices, and it looks like a, you know, more, not much bigger than like a fountain pen or something. Yeah, it's really, it's really small. It uh, weighs two ounces. It's about five inches long. You can have it in your pocket, in your hand, attach it to your backpack. And then you can sort of almost forget it's there because it pairs wirelessly right. over Bluetooth to your phone. And then you continue to use your phone the way you normally do. So you just text, and right. send a message, and then it does all the work for you. Yeah, wonderful. And, and, and it's actually elegant design too, so it's not some you know, clunky kind of piece of material that you go around. This, this looks like artwork, you know, what you guys done with that. It sounds good. So we spent a lot of time on industrial design, uh -huh. and we bought, wanted it to both be really sleek and light and, and compact but we also needed it to be really rugged. So given that we know that a lot of people might use it when they're hiking outside in the rain during a, a natural disaster, right. some sort of emergency, we've made it weatherproof, dust tight, and you know, really meant to withstand the elements you know, and be as resilient as the people who are going to be using them. And I read about this, I mean, you, you came across this idea when you're living in Brooklyn and, and your business is there that your, Hurricane Sandy was your inspiration for all this, right? Yeah, actually during Hurricane Sandy, depending on where you were, a fourth to half of all cell towers went down and fourth wow. power was out in a lot of places as well, which meant there was no Wi-Fi. So I was sitting there thinking, you know, we have these smartphones on us all the time, but we right. can't communicate unless um, central connectivity of some kind is available. So is there a way that we could enable completely smartphone to smartphone communication where people could essentially become their own towers? And I quickly realized that there was no way to do it with what's inside your phone. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had to develop our own device, external right. device, and that's what GoTenna is. Well, that's right. For out of disaster comes creativity and, and progress, and, and you're doing it single-handedly there with your group, and, and you got this device, Go. And go tenna.com and you pre-order 150 bucks you get two so you and a friend to talk and anybody who has one of these things now you can communicate with on the network right and so it, yes, it's not just with anyone else has go tenna not just the person or people right. you buy your go tenna right. today and um there's the opportunity to not to speak to people you know but people you don't know <laughs> because you broadcast them 
other things within range of you. In fact, <laughs> you know, during our trials, we've seen people use it for everything to, from flirting to trying to sell a couch in their neighborhood. I, and of course, you can use it in an emergency because sometimes the people who are closest to you are the people most helpful absolutely. to communicate with, even if you don't know them. It's all about communication, and you found a niche that obviously is going to expand and very important right now. And thank you for doing this and doing this work and creating a great looking design, too. So that's gotenna.com. <laughs> Daniela, thank you so much, and best of luck. And people will get it before Christmas because you're not real. Otherwise, you have to wait till then, you're going to have to pay double. So do it now, right? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Take care. Well, it's really unbelievable what's happening now, you know, with technology and the tools that are available, how people with no background at all in what they want to do are making it happen. Now, now here's an, a guy who really is an artist. I mean, he does sculpture and all kinds of things like that, even he was involved in making a, a 3D printed fashion, a dress. But he was, became a runner, you know, and how you uh, run, you know, you put earbuds in your ears, you know, and, and they're always falling out and everything like that. And he got frustrated at that. So he said, how do you get earbuds, you know, these for speakers that don't fall out? Well, you have to have them custom made, you know, and the custom made earpieces like they do for... Uh, uh, hearing aids and stuff like that. I mean, that could be a thousand dollars or more. You know, nobody's going to buy a thousand dollars like that. So he figured out just researching and talking to people and things like that that he could take a cell phone with the camera in it, take a photograph of your ear, and then have his 3D printer print out customized earbuds for you that fit in your ear so comfortable, they never fall out. Plus, this is what else it does. It, 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 on an app on your phone, it'll cut out noises or let in other noises. So you could be listening here like in my home uh, and have my earbuds here and I could program it so I hear the door. You know, or you could hear traffic or something like that when you're out running. Man. Who would ever believe that technology like that is available? And he's doing this, like for 150 bucks, you get these customized things that are so valuable. You know, it costs thousands of dollars normally out, this, uh, out there, and nobody even has them yet except his. Now, he's going on crowdfunding, you know, and, and raising money over $750,000 already. Right, just for earbuds, you know. Who would have thought like that? He didn't even know anything about him. He's an artist. <laughs> what does he know about this technology stuff? He figured it out. See, we can all figure things out nowadays because it is, there's no magic to things. It's just getting out and researching, talking to people, and that kind of help us out there to help you find that out. You know, so there's no obstacles. You know, maybe there's a few left, but <laughs> they're getting s smaller and smaller, the stuff that are, it could be obstacles in your life to doing the things you want. And that's what's wonderful about our society. I don't know why everybody is so upset about our country going nowhere. Man, you can go anywhere you want. Now with the internet and the help that's out there and even the money that's out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason to be blue. The future is unlimited. So watch how this guy's using it. Well, eat tomorrow, Jabati, man. You are going to revolutionize the earplug. See this earplug, people? It falls out of my ear all the time, and i got to put it in. You'll see me during the interview. They're sticking this thing back in. <laughs> when I'm running, it's just the same thing. I'm running on my earbuds. All out. Well, Eat Tomorrow has invented this thing. I mean, you're the inventor, the producer, you know, uh, and everything of something that will never fall out of your ear, custom designed, you know, your iPhone does the customizing and, and you're gonna be 3D print a customized earpiece, never fall out, but plus it's jewelry, it's ear jewelry. <laughs> you got 15 markets all in one idea. God, where did this come from? Where did you get this idea? Um, well, I, uh, you know, I, I've been doing art for many years and uh, my last project was a 3D printed uh, dress. Oh, God. <laughs> now I want to do cross-dressing. If I could get a 3D printed dress. 
Yes, and uh, you know, when I did the dress, I really wanted to do something that I could actually bring to market. And the dress uh -huh. wasn't, you know, <laughs> wasn't a good uh, fit to the market because it just was thousands of dollars to uh, 3D print. So really? we look, I looked for something small. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, uh, I also in that time, I moved from New York to California. I started running a lot and everything that I had in my ears basically fell out and I wanted to do something better. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> so I came out with own phones. And, and but but this is a technology. I mean, to, to to get a custom design, all you do is you take your phone, and you take a video of your ear, and the technology allows you to make a three D ear you know, piece for that's customized, right? For every person, will get a customized earpiece, right. plus your art on top of that, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's the fun part. Not just right. hearing something, but your art. And, and so, I mean, you have beautiful jewelry, I mean, things and bronze and plastic and wings coming out of your ears. And, <laughs> and, and if you're a hip hop artist or, or a, a, a Wall Street banker, there's something there that's very suitable for almost any category of person. You know, the, the great thing about 3D printing is that uh, since anyways, we, you know, the own phone is about making a custom fit um, earphone. Right. Um, so it doesn't matter if you print something that have uh, a wing on it or if it has, you know, ah. just a logo on it, uh, you anyways printing it. Um, ah. And it doesn't take more, you know, necessarily more time mm -hmm. to do a, a custom design as well. So. Uh, what we do is we do offer people, um, you know, after they scan the ears, to choose one of the designs that they want. Mm. And more than that, you know, it's not only my designs, <laughs> opening own phones uh, to the designer community. So you can uh, ah, basically become a designer, um, a little bit like Apple did with the, with the developer program. Uh, we have a, a designer program. So you can uh, join mm. own phones designer program and get the guidelines of how to design um, own phones and then basically be able to share um, or to sell your designs to the community through our platform. So you don't need to know how I to make see. earphones. You just or the other it. thing, I mean, just think if I was a designer, I'll, I'll, I'll design your logo for an earphone, right? right. <laughs> and yes, so the whole company will want to have a yeah. big question mark. On right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I could get question mark here. Oh, that's perfect because a question mark is great because it goes over the year and whatever. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's so I could have question mark earphones and yeah. all custom design for everybody who works with me, right? Exactly. God, what a Christmas gift. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But also, you have other features on this too. How you say what you know because the earphones are, are so customized. I mean, it could eliminate the noise, or you could let the noise in. I mean, how does that feature work? Uh, well, you know, the the con the noise cancellation uh, been around for a while now. Uh, but nothing, you know, nothing really developed uh, uh, in, in that field. And uh, <clears throat> what we're doing is basically is we um, uh, have a microphone in the own phones uh, that let you do a couple of things. One of the thing is that it lets the uh, environmental noise in if you're interested. So if, for example, you're running outside um, and you want to hear what's going on around you, um, you know, we're just uh, integrating the sound from the environment in, or um, or in the, if you're in the gym and there's uh, people that make a lot of uh, you know noises around you and you just want to block <laughs> them, so you decide not to have your environment I see. sound inside. Or your family, other, you want to tune out your family and just not. not right. Be <laughs> the other interesting thing that we developed, it's called the real world notification, is that if you're sitting, you know, for example, uh, if you're sitting and listening to music in your house because you don't want to. You know, you don't want to uh, annoy all of your family member by uh -huh. turning oh, up the stereo. Actually. You can listen to music, but still you can hear if, for example, the door ring bell or or oh. the phone rings or somebody knocks on the door. Um, uh, so you hear, if, you know, if there is a not notification from the real world and, and we get that into your sound so you can still be with earphones but be open to what's going so on in other words, there's an app you could say this kind of sound i want to hear yes. and, and then it'll come in you know knocking on the door and i'm listening to you know, rock music or something i'll hear that knocking and no matter yes. how loud it is 
Wow, yes. that is yes. cool. Now, why do I have to come to an artist who has art in museums and <laughs> galleries <laughs> all over New York to learn about technology? That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm always keeping, I'm always thinking about what I want uh, when I buying earphones. And then I was like, okay, maybe I should just uh, make sure that this thing will happen. Right. So, <laughs> well, you made it happen. And, yeah. and actually, to get now, you're on Kickstarter and you went, oh, God, you, you know, in two, three weeks, you made more than your uh, quota already. You were hoping for a quarter of a million dollars, $250,000. And you're just in your third week and you have $300,000. So you, your gangbusters is going to happen. You're successful as hell at this thing. You got thousands of people who want it. And, and to find it, while you're still on Kickstarter, it's own phones, O-W-N-P-H-O-N-E-S dot com. And that will get you the Kickstarter. And after Kickstarter, you're going to be selling this to the public. But you want to get Kickstarter because of the deal, right? I mean, it's a hell of a deal if you get it's it. It's a hell of a deal. We're selling it for half of the price, basically. Half so price! <laughs> it's uh, $150 instead of wow. retail. So if you want wow. it, you should grab it this while it's still is now three. I mean, you're going to get a $300 product for $150, and it's custom. I mean, the famous technology, you take a... Uh, I guess it's a video of your ear yeah. that then translates that you know, in the computer that prints out a customized. So if it isn't good enough, I mean, and customize, what happens? You just shove it in, you, you learn how to file it down to make it work, or, you know, if the technology screws up a little, and I get something that looks like for Dumbo and not for me. Well, if it doesn't work for you in the first time, which we, you know, skeptical that it's not going to work because, yeah. uh, you know, it's basically, it's uh, almost like a science, you know, it's not, right, almost, exactly. it's, it's a tool that, works uh, so right. you use your phone and, and we create a 3d image of your ears um, and from what we tested it's it's working in very very high uh, rate uh, but if it doesn't uh, you just ship it back to us and uh, do it again. make okay. another one yeah wonderful well you just crank up the 3d printer again and out it comes well that's wonderful and you're a wonderful person and thanks for taking all that creativity you had and making wonderful artwork, which I'm going to look at, and also that 3D printer dress, I'm going to look on Google. But for now, go to Oaf Own Phones, O W N P H O N E S dot com, and see Itamar's famous <laughs> ear phones there. Thank you so much, and good Thank luck you. to you. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice chatting with you. Hi.